Hey everyone, in this video, we're examining something that happened this week that should be getting way more attention than it is. Spain and Portugal just experienced one of the biggest power outages in European history. Millions of people suddenly found themselves without electricity. Trains stopped in tunnels. People got stuck in elevators. Cell phones went dead. ATMs stopped working. And modern life basically ground to a halt. What makes this blackout particularly important is that Spain was supposed to be a renewable energy success story. They've been aggressively pushing solar and wind power and then their grid collapsed dramatically. Here's the critical question. Why did Spain's grid fail? And what does it teach us about the fundamental importance of reliable baseload power? Stick around, because this is a wake-up call that many governments and environmental activists don't want to acknowledge. This is big industry, and this is the Spanish blackout. What is baseload power? Before we dive into what happened in Spain, we need to understand a critical concept called baseload power. This isn't complicated, but it's absolutely fundamental to modern civilization. Think about your home's electricity use. Some things need power all the time, right? Your refrigerator, your heating or cooling system, medical devices, security systems. These run 24 seven. That consistent always needed electricity is your base load. Now scale that up to a whole country. Hospitals, data centers, factories, transportation systems, millions of homes, they all need a minimum amount of electricity that must be reliably available every minute of every day. That's what baseload power is, the electricity that's always needed and absolutely cannot be interrupted. Throughout modern history, baseload power has come from four proven sources. Coal plants, these can run continuously for months, generating steady, reliable power regardless of weather. Natural gas plants, these can run constantly and also quickly adjust their output when demand changes. Nuclear power plants, these run non-stop for about 18 to 24 months before needing refueling, providing some of the most consistent power available, hydroelectric dams. In places with enough water, these can provide steady power too. The critical characteristic of these sources is reliability. They're predictable and dependable. They don't disappear when clouds form or when the wind stops blowing. They deliver electricity when and where it's needed, day and night, summer and winter, rain or shine. And that reliability is exactly what was missing in Spain when their grid collapsed. What happened in Spain? On Monday, April 28, 2025, Spain was experimenting with exactly the kind of power grid that climate activists have been demanding. It was a sunny day, and solar power was generating about 60% of all the electricity in the country. Wind turbines were adding another 9%. That means roughly 70% of Spain's power was coming from intermittent renewable sources, an arrangement many politicians and environmental groups claim is the future of electricity. At around 12.30 p.m., disaster struck. According to the reports, there were two separate power losses in southwestern Spain, just a second and a half apart. These losses caused the frequency of the electrical grid to fall from the standard 50 hertz to 49 hertz. This might sound technical, but here's what it means. Electricity grids require precise frequency maintenance. When the frequency drops by more than 0.1 hertz, power stations automatically shut down to protect themselves from damage. That's exactly what happened. As power stations shut down, the problem cascaded through the system like falling dominoes. Spain's grid disconnected from the wider European grid. And within seconds, the entire Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, was plunged into darkness. The inconvenient truth here becomes clear when you look at why this happened and how the grid's instability directly relates to its heavy reliance on renewable energy. The fundamental flaw of renewables. Here's the reality that many renewable advocates don't want to discuss. Solar and wind power have an inherent physics-based disadvantage when it comes to grid stability. Traditional power plants like coal, gas, and nuclear don't just generate electricity. They provide something essential called inertia to the grid. Inertia comes from those massive turbines spinning inside traditional power plants. Think of them like giant flywheels weighing hundreds of tons. When something goes wrong on the grid, these huge spinning turbines keep going due to their momentum, giving the system time to respond and stabilize, just like how a heavy flywheel keeps an engine running smoothly between power strokes. Solar panels have no moving parts whatsoever. They generate electricity directly from sunlight, but they provide zero inertia to the grid. Wind turbines do spin, but they're designed to shut down quickly to protect themselves during grid disruptions, the exact opposite of what the grid needs during an emergency. When Spain's grid was running at almost 70% renewables, there simply wasn't enough inertia in the system. So when those two power losses happened, the grid couldn't stabilize itself. The system had no physical buffer against disruption. And that's why the whole thing came crashing down. The experts quoted in these articles acknowledge this reality. 
David Brayshaw from the University of Reading stated that with less inertia, imbalances must be corrected more quickly and outages are likely to become more significant and widespread. This isn't just theoretical, we've seen this exact scenario play out before. Deja vu, South Australia, 2016. Spain's blackout is history repeating itself. In 2016, South Australia experienced virtually the identical scenario. South Australia had become heavily dependent on wind power after closing reliable coal plants. Then a storm knocked out some transmission lines. The wind farms did exactly what Spain's renewable installations did. They automatically shut down to protect themselves. With insufficient baseload power from traditional sources, the entire state of South Australia went completely dark. The process of restarting the grid afterward, what engineers call a black start, revealed another critical weakness of renewables. You need power plants that can turn on without needing electricity from elsewhere. Solar and wind are completely useless for black starts. Both in South Australia and in Spain, they had to rely on traditional power sources, hydro and gas, to restart their grids. The renewable installations that politicians had spent billions promoting were sitting idle, unable to contribute anything to the recovery. Germany is reluctantly learning this expensive lesson too. They've added 872 wind turbines since April 2024, but their wind power output actually fell by 16% because nature doesn't follow human schedules. The wind simply wasn't blowing as much. This hard reality check is exactly why Germany, once the poster child for renewable energy, is now planning to build 20 gigawatts of natural gas power plants by 2030. After years of blackout risks and grid instability, they've been forced to acknowledge they need reliable baseload power. The reality check. So what's the realistic approach here? The evidence from Spain, South Australia and Germany all points to the same unavoidable conclusion. Renewable energy cannot form the backbone of a reliable electricity system. The fundamental requirement of any electricity grid is reliability. Without it, nothing else matters. Here's what the evidence tells us we need. Maintain traditional baseload power plants. We must keep sufficient coal, gas, and nuclear plants operating to provide the majority of our electricity needs. These plants deliver the baseload power and grid inertia that are non-negotiable requirements. Recognize the limitations of batteries. While storage can help with brief fluctuations, grid-scale batteries remain prohibitively expensive and resource-intensive. Even the largest battery installations can only power a city for minutes to hours, not days or weeks. Be honest about costs. The true cost of renewable energy must include the backup systems required when wind and solar aren't producing. When these costs are properly accounted for, the cheap renewable narrative falls apart. Prioritize nuclear power. If reducing carbon emissions is truly the goal, Nuclear power is the only proven technology that can deliver reliable baseload power without emissions. Countries that have rushed to close nuclear plants have seen both emissions and prices rise. Recognize that synthetic solutions are experimental. Britain has deployed 200-ton flywheels in an attempt to mimic traditional plants, but these are expensive band-aids trying to compensate for the inherent flaws of renewables. Australia's energy market operator has been issuing increasingly urgent warnings They've stated that system strength and minimum system load have become critical risks earlier than expected. Translated from engineer speak, this means our grid is becoming dangerously unstable due to too much intermittent renewable energy and insufficient baseload power. Conclusion. The Spain blackout isn't just a wake-up call. It's a definitive real-world demonstration of what energy engineers and grid experts have been warning about for years. Renewable energy is fundamentally incapable of providing the reliable electricity that modern civilization requires. As one of the quotes from the articles puts it, it's all good fun until everyone loses their power. And that's exactly right. When the lights go out, when hospitals lose power, when transportation systems fail, when food spoils in refrigerators, that's when the true cost of ideological energy policies becomes clear. The people of Spain and Portugal just experienced what happens when theoretical models collide with physical reality. The hard truth is that baseload power isn't optional. It's the foundation of a functioning electricity system. Coal, gas, and nuclear plants don't just provide electricity. They provide the stability that allows the grid to function at all. The evidence from real-world examples is overwhelming. Every region that has pushed too far toward renewables has experienced the same problems. Grid instability, skyrocketing costs, and ultimately blackouts. From South Australia to Germany to California to Spain, the pattern is unmistakable. So the next time someone claims we can power our society primarily with solar panels and wind turbines, remember Spain, remember South Australia, 
And remember that keeping the lights on isn't just about generating enough electricity, it's about having the right kind of electricity generation that works when we need it, not just when the weather cooperates. If you found this informative, please hit that like button and subscribe to support the channel. And let me know in the comments, do you think governments should prioritize reliable baseload power over intermittent renewables? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.